Hey geometry students, I'm guessing that you're here because those proofs are making you a little bit crazy. So come along and join me on this lesson. We'll visualize our way through it and come up with some good strategies. <laughs> I got you, I got you, don't worry, let's go. So every proof has in common these things. They all have a diagram, a statement and reason table, some given information, and something that you have to prove. The strategy here is to take that given information apply what you know already about geometry to that information and put it together to make a formal argument that proves whatever they're asking you to prove. Which in this case is that angle C is congruent to angle B, that they have the same measure. That's what you want to prove. So now we're ready to start filling in this table. Our first given says that segment AB is congruent to segment AC. And again, that was a given, that is our reason. Now on the diagram, let's label that. Let's label AB and AC with the same dash to show that they are congruent to each other. Now we're ready for our next given, which says that segment AD bisects segment CB at the point D. And again, that was a given. So basically that base CB is getting cut in half by that vertical line AD. So since it cuts it in half, we know that that segment CD on the left is going to be congruent to that segment BD on the right. So our conclusion is that CD is congruent to BD, and our reason is that that is the definition of a segment bisector. And that's what bisectors do, they cut things in half. So whenever you're doing a chart for a proof, Whenever you make a mark on the diagram, you have to have a corresponding statement and reason on the chart. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Now notice here that I can take the large triangle ABC and split it up into two halves along that line AD. Now if I split this up into two separate triangles, we notice that they both share that line AD. So I'm going to say that AD is congruent to itself in both triangles. And my reason for saying that is the reflexive property. And I'm going to go ahead and mark segment AD on the diagram with a little x. Now with the information that we have so far, we can see that triangle ACD and triangle ABD are congruent. And we can say that because of side, side, side. Both triangles have three corresponding sides that are congruent. Now remember that we wanted to prove that angle C and angle B were congruent, and those angles are both within the two triangles that we just showed were also congruent. So we can say that angle C is congruent to angle B by CPCTC, which means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and we are done with this proof. <laughs> So what do you think so far? You feel a little better? Maybe? All right, let's try another one. Okay, so for this example, we have two pieces of given information and we wanna prove that triangle GEJ is congruent to triangle FEH. Now notice that these two triangles are overlapping. Here's GEJ and here's FEH. And again, we want to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So it is helpful to redraw them spread apart and not overlapping. Otherwise, things do get kind of confusing. And since these triangles are overlapping, they both share this triangle EHJ in the middle. So keep that in mind as well. And now we're ready to take on the proof. So let's start with our first given. GH is congruent to FJ. Again, the reason is given. So that says that segment GH and segment FJ are both the same length, and we can mark the diagram accordingly. Our second given is that angle EHG is congruent to angle EJF. So angle EHG I mark, and angle EJF I mark the same way to show that they are congruent. So now the givens are out of the way, and now let's go ahead and revisit the fact that these two triangles GEJ and FEH are overlapping, and that triangle in the middle they share, in particular segment HJ. So we're going to say that HJ is congruent to itself, and our reason is the reflexive property. 
Now think about the bases of those two overlapping triangles. We see that the base of triangle GEJ is formed by combining GH, the blue segment, with HJ, the purple segment. And similarly, the base of triangle FEH is formed by segment JF, the blue segment, and HJ, the purple segment. And since the base of both triangles can be formed by adding or combining congruent segments, we say that GH plus HJ is equal to JF plus HJ, which implies that the bases of the triangles are the same, or that GJ is congruent to FH. And our reason for that is the addition postulate. Since we were combining or adding congruent segments to form the base of each triangle. The next thing that we can do here is identify some pairs of supplementary angles. We can see that angle EHJ and angle EHG are supplementary, they're a linear pair. And we also see that angle EJF and angle EJH are also supplementary since they are a linear pair and linear pairs form supplementary angles. With that in mind, we can go ahead now and say that angle EHJ is congruent to angle EJH. Now, why can we say that? Remember that it was given that angle EHG and angle EJF were congruent. Now, even though I don't know what that angle measure is, let's just pretend that they were both 120 degrees. If that were the case, then their supplements would have to both be 60. They would both be congruent to each other. Now, I'm just making those numbers up to help you understand that when two angles are congruent, then their supplements must also be congruent. So this helps us to say that angle EHJ is congruent to angle EJH because linear pairs of congruent angles are congruent. Now we should notice that triangle EHJ is isosceles. And the reason for saying that is because of the base angle theorem. That is that the two base angles are congruent. And because triangle EHJ is isosceles, we know that the sides opposite those congruent angles are also congruent. So we can conclude that side EH is congruent to side EJ because that's the definition of an isosceles triangle. So now we're finally ready to prove that triangle GEJ and triangle FEH are congruent. Again, that's those two overlapping triangles. Now we see in EGH, we have a side and angle on a side, and in triangle EHF, we have a side and angle on a side, and the angle is in between the two congruent sides. So we can finish this proof using the side angle side theorem. So I hope that everyone feels at least a little bit better with solving these proofs, okay? It is true that the more you practice them, the easier that they get. You're not just going to get this overnight. So keep it up. Keep working at it. You'll get better. And hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. And we'll see you soon.